So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So, hey, Carolyn. So, the title of this is, uh, Do It Like It's Your Last, all right? I wanna read the scripture real fast, and um, then I'm gonna go into my spiel, okay? So the title of this is Do It Like It's Your Last, all right? Hey, Tequila, how you doing? What up, what up, what up, uh, Stanford? Good to see you, brother. All right, so I'm coming from 2 Samuel. This, this is going to be a good word, I think, I believe. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. It says, Then David danced before the Lord with all of his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. I'm going to go to verse 20. I'm reading chapter 6 of 2 Samuel. Then David returned to bless his house, uh, excuse me, to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michal, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord and I will be um, excuse me, and I will be even more undignified than this and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maidservants of whom you have spoken uh, by them, I will be held honor. Can y'all hear me clearly? Can y'all hear me clearly? Let me know if y'all can't hear me. Can y'all hear me? A little clearly. Can y'all hear me? Because <clears throat> I want to go ahead and get, get, get this out of me. You get, Okay, cool. So, again, the title of this is called... <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit. The title of this is called... Give it or do it like it's your last, right? And I sit back and I begin to ponder about many Christians and many believers. And God showed me that many of us have become spoiled. Because the minute something, watch this, follow me throughout the whole thing. The minute something don't go the way that we plan or God does not do it in the time frame in which we uh, desire it to be done we start to lose hope and we start to lose faith and we begin to waver in everything that we believe that is of God right because it didn't happen how we thought that it should and it, it, it and it began to dawn on me that it always happened with people that say that they believe in God but then I look at somebody and just hear me from a spiritual realm and I look at somebody like a Jay-Z who the world always want to criticize and, you know, secular artists. It seems like to me that the world understands the kingdom principle of God. Follow me. Better than his own people. Which is this. Jay-Z prophesied to himself and said, this is what I would do. And you ain't got to believe me. And what he wind up doing is doing everything that he that he actually said that I would do, but guess what happened? He had doubters, he had people that did not believe, even his own uncle told him that he would never sell a million records, but he prophesied, told them what he was gonna do and did it. That meant no matter the challenge, no matter the adversity that he had to face, I understood that I put it out there, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and be a producer of what I believe that I see for my life. But we, as believers, have a God who was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all they were able to ask and or think. And because we know that God will do it, the minute the t uh, times get tough, we start to doubt the power that's within us. And we no longer produce what God gave us. And we asking God to deliver us because Satan is busy. Now watch this. David had the mentality of the kingdom. David said, it don't matter who looks at me, I'm going to dance before the Lord. Watch this. 
And the Bible says that David danced with all of his might. And then guess what happened with that? He danced with all of his might. And then even to the point that Michal, the daughter of Saul, she was actually embarrassed the way David was dancing. And because she was embarrassed, she called herself confronting him. And David responded, I danced before me and God. What he was saying was, this ain't got nothing to do with you. And if you think that that was unruly, I'm going to be more undignified than that. What David did was he understood that I'm going to give this thing all I got. It don't matter what folk can say about me. It don't matter who don't like it. It don't matter who can talk about it. But I'm going to give it all I got because guess what? I am the ruler. I am the one that God designed. I'm the one that God ordained. I'm the one that God chose. So before I try to present myself and explain what I did before man, I'm going to keep my eyes on the prize. And I'm going to keep dancing before God. And if you didn't like me then, you ain't going to like me now. Because everything I'm about to do is be, it's, it's about to be bigger and way more... Uh, 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 encouraging than what it was prior but we as the people or as the body of Christ the minute something happens we don't say I'm gonna still give it all I got we say God can you help me out of this situation well how about this how about we don't ask God to help us out of a situation but we keep fighting and fighting and fighting and then we will see our way out because God give us the ability to get up out of everything that we're in but guess what we do we begin to doubt. We don't believe no more. We don't trust God anymore. Because why? We have become wimps in the body of Christ. I seen some today where this girl was criticizing Kimberell because she did uh, the song with Jay-Z. Well, guess what, baby? She is able to touch people that you can't touch. You don't know the assignment on her life. So guess what? People don't know the assignment on your life. So why are you trying to explain yourself to folk that don't even accept you anyway? Jesus never explained himself. Watch, let me show you something. Jesus said, listen, I am the Messiah. Now, you ain't got to like that, but this is who I am. So once you to say who you are, now be it. Jesus never stopped being the Messiah. So why is it that when you go through adversity in your life, you stop being who God called you to be? Why? Because you're spoiled. And you want God to come through. And God is like, I already came through. But you got to walk in the power that I've already given you. You asking me to give you something that I already gave you. When you stop being a wimp. And you stop feeling sorry for yourself. And you strap up your boots. And you recognize greater is he that's within me. Than he that's in this world. That I'm going to prophesy to my life. And then I'm not going to do the work. Watch this. Let me show you something. We talk about miracles, right? See, let me show you what God showed me in miracles. Watch this. Let me show you something. God said to me, he said, see, this is how miracles work. Okay? See, a miracle is this. I said that I'm going to write a book. No, no. My book is going to uh, 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 sell a million copies, right? It's going to be a, a New York uh, a, a bestseller. Now, here's the deal. If I never write the book, there is no way that the book will ever be a, a New York uh, bestseller and, and sell over a million copies. There's no way it'll happen, right? So God says, the miracle is this. As you write the book, I'm going to bless the outcome of the book. And how I'm going to bless the outcome of the book is this. People doubted you and said because you was illiterate or you don't have a journalism degree, I'm going to show how this book, watch this, you ain't going to have to spend no money on marketing. You ain't going to have to have a PR person. You ain't going to have to have a manager. Watch this. I'm going to show you how I'm going to provide and the world is going to what now produce what you need. Watch this. The Bible says that, watch this, the, the, the wealth of the wicked is there for the righteous, right? So all of a sudden, outlets is going to start calling you and say, hey, can we interview you about your book? Who, people who didn't even know you. Hey, uh, we want to feature you on our daily show. Hey, we want to know how can we order a thousand copies. Matter of fact, I want to uh, order a hundred thousand copies. Now, guess what the miracle was? The miracle was you was obedient to God and God said because you was obedient, now I supplied everything else that you needed. And now all of a sudden, people that doubted you and said that you could not do it, now all of a sudden, you are selling a million copies and that was the miracle because you put the work in. We think a miracle happens without putting in work. 
The Bible says faith without works is dead. You have to do some work and then God will provide the increase. That's Bible. God will provide the increase. So when you get it, get it in your feelings and get in your emotions, you got to say, you know what? It don't matter who don't believe. It don't matter who support me. It don't matter if I got to come up out of my clothes and everybody doubt me. I'm going to dance like I ain't got no. Listen, let me tell you something. Sometimes you got to act like you're not in your right mind because you're not in your right mind. You got the mind of Christ. So when you're going through whatever you're going through, you can't care about who talking about you. You got to give it like, listen, you better pray like it's your last time. You better uh, preach like it's your last time. You better got doggone get on your knees and start worshiping like it's your last time. You better put forth uh, energy to that book like it's your last opportunity to present a book. You better keep writing that business plan like it's your last opportunity to write that business plan. You got to do all that you can. Give it all you got like it's your last moment, like it's your last breath. But the problem is we say, I'm going to do it tomorrow, or we feel like we got another breath to breathe. Well, act like you don't have another breath to breathe and say, you know what? While I got this breath that I'm breathing right here, right now, I'm going to give it all I got. And the world understand that principle. That's why the world is the one that started saying that I have the same 24 hours that you have. Now, what are you doing with your, with your 24 hours? If these people can prophesy or say this is what they're going to do and do it, why is it that the body of Christ say what they're going to do and you never see the end result? You never see hardly the people of God producing what they said that they were going to do. Because they feel like they have an anchor. And they feel like that God is their anchor, so God's going to save me. But God said, I purposed you to do a work. And while you're trying to be saved, I need you to give it all you got. Stop focusing on being saved by me and give it all you got. Stop focusing on, well, if I call on his name, he's going to deliver. I need you to deliver, thus saith the Lord. I need you to, got doggone, get on your knees and keep working or, 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 or get on your desk and start writing. Start producing. Give it all you got. Give it. See, God said this. The people that didn't accept him is not his people, right? Watch this. But he said... My principle applies to all. And it's crazy that the world understand the God principle better than us. That's why you see the wicked prospering. Because they understand commitment. We don't commit to a lot of things. We too busy arguing about what sister so-and-so wore to church or what deacon showed up and what who, who, who sex and who and who gay and who not gay and who taking the money and who not taking the money? And you're missing what really matters. And your purpose is not advancing because you're caught up in the wrong wrath. And so therefore you're dying broke or you're dying incomplete and you're dying rich as all get out but never seeing the manifestation of what God placed inside of you because you're focused on the wrong thing and you got the wrong conversation. I'd rather have a conversation with Jay-Z and whoever else about business because I know that I'm going to talk to him and I'm going to turn it for the kingdom. See, the thing about it is I can't hang around number preachers. That's not who I am. Okay? Because I know that I am light. So in order for me to do what God called me to do, then I have to be around some darkness because the light that's inside of me has to shine. And when they see the example of Christ inside of me, then the Bible says if, if I be lifted up, then I will draw all men. Well, guess what? If Jay-Z is assigned to God, just maybe my life as a man of God who never compromised, who never sugarcoated, but stood on the word of God, maybe my life was supposed to be the life that transformed him. While y'all complain that he called himself a God, what if I told you that the Bible does call you a God? What if I show it to you biblically that the Bible does call you a God? What if I show you, show you it in the Bible? You worry about the wrong thing. Be the example of Christ. And just maybe that Paul, uh, that Saul will become a Paul. Just maybe if you give it your all and stop critiquing your own self and, and defeating yourself by talking yourself out of purpose, by talking yourself out of destiny. Sometimes God needs you to connect with folk that don't know him.
Matter of fact, all the time, God needs you to connect to people that don't know him. Jesus connected to folk that was not concerned about him. And he said, I will make you fishers of men. He said that. He didn't go to the people that was calling on him because the folk that was calling on him did not accept him, did not receive him. They actually denied him. And it was the folk that didn't even know him that he wound up uh, grabbing hold of and converting. He was hanging around thugs, man. He was letting whores, uh, that people knew that they, that, that they was whores, wash his feet. He was hanging around people that everybody reject because Jesus gave his all. So he didn't care what folk think. So when you're doing what God commanded you to do, it don't matter what folk can say about you. It don't matter what, what they can see on the outward appearance. If you're doing and giving it your all, God shall get the glory. So I am here tonight to say, do it like it's your last time. Everything you got, do it like it's your last time, man. Woman, do it like it's your last time. That's all I got to say tonight. You got to do it. Let me take this thing. You got to do this thing like it's your last time, people. I'm sorry. God is not playing. He ain't playing church no more. He, matter of fact, he never played church. He allowed us to walk in grace for a season. Now, God is saying, I am coming back after the church. And I need some folk who ain't sitting here spoiled and waiting on me to cut the fatted calf saying, here, like you want me to sp uh, uh, spoon feed you 24-7? God said, I need some grown folk that will stand up and do what thus saith the Lord. I need some folk that ain't ashamed and will not cry every time adversity come. I need some folk that will go hard even when they're bleeding. I need some folk that will witness even though they need some witness, uh, need to be witnessed too. I need some folk that will go out and look at the land and say, this is the land that God commanded me. And they see the enemies on the land, but they trust God that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. The problem is we are fearing evil instead of fearing our God. And see, the thing about it is we have missed the purpose because we have now focused on what we can see. I don't know where all that came from. But there is something about the glory of God, man. There is something about the glory of God. You got you to gotta understand. You have to under, watch this thing. You have to understand how God moves. How God moves. It is not like where the church have been going. He don't move like the church have been going. God said we are in the wrong position. We, and then the thing about it is when it don't, when, when somebody like myself or y'all, because I, I believe I, I have a bunch of folk that follow me that look like me too, right? Hey, Pastor, what I love you, man, with all my heart, Pastor Fisher, I love you, dude. Let me say this to y'all. God, I mean, watch this, watch this. God is not looking the way man is looking. That's why God is saying, stop looking at what they can see and look at what I can see. Because what they can see, they tarnish. What I can see, I bless. What they can see, they curse. What I can see, I multiply. And so you have to get to the position where you're saying, God, I don't care about the position that they think I should be in. I'm going to be in the position that you commanded my life. Because I want the glory of God. And if you want the glory of God, then you have to be in a position that sometimes ain't popular. You have to be in a position sometimes that folk ain't going to pat you on your back and they're not going to say, yes, I'm with you, sister. I'm with you, brother. No, sometimes being in the right position of God means to be alone, to be by yourself, to be where folk think you're crazy, where folks start talking about you. And if you're a pastor, every pastor ain't going to walk with you. Every pastor ain't going to agree with you. They won't come against you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to try to blackball you. But God said, watch this, touch not what I bless. Don't call common what I call holy. And if they want to think that they can touch you, touch not my anointing to my prophet no harm. And if you are anointed by God, watch how he elevates you in this season in the midst of your enemies. They cannot touch you. They cannot come against you. Watch this. The Bible says, watch this. In the book of Peter, 
Watch this. The Bible says, God says, God says, God says, watch this, watch this. He says, he says, Satan come to sift you as wheat. I'm going to do a teaching on this thing. He has come to sift you as wheat. Now, guess what happened, though? He could not touch him because of the hedge and protection that was around him. He could only try to smell him. He could only try to sift him, but he could not grab hold of him because God already had him protected. When you understand that, yes, the devil may sift you as wheat, but he can't touch you because the hedge and protection that God keeps around you. What? You better walk in your power. You better walk in your authority. You better walk in your anointing. You better walk in your purpose. You better walk in your calling. Do not deny yourself of the blessed life that God commanded you because of what folk thought that you should be or what folk think that you should be doing. And guess what? You were supposed to mess up. If you messed up, you were supposed to mess up because God is going to use it for his glory. It's funny because I almost cried just now because I, I recognize that there are people that are hurting because they have been rejected by what they thought that they would find refuge in. And they thought that the church would receive them, but the church rejected them. And God says, I am your God. No matter what they say, no matter what they can do, I am your God. And if you trust me, I will restore you. And everything that you thought that you lost, I will give it back to you. And I'm going to show you that the locusts have no power over your life. And when they thought that they can hurt you, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to let you become a blessing to their life. Here, let me say that one more time. God says, I'm going to allow you to be a blessing to their life. Because though they come against you, you cannot hate them. God said, I am not calling you to even come against them. I am calling you to be what I called you to be. And in that, you're going to be a blessing. And they're going to fall into repentance. Because they got to come see me. Because they know that they was wrong about your life. So you ain't got to worry about avenging them. Because vengeance is the Lord's. And I'm going to cover you. But you're going to be a blessing. Because I need you no matter what is happening to you. I need you to guess what God says. To be in a position to be loved. When people see you, I need them to see love. No matter what they talking about, be love. No matter how bad it looks, be love. Because when you be love, you be me. And when you wear my wardrobe, you cannot fail. That's what God says. It don't matter how it looks. Mm. I'm going to tell you something. God is moving in such a way. That if you trust God, it don't matter. I'm telling you, in this season, I put up a status the other day. I said, I said, you have to, you have to watch this. I said, thank you, Holy Ghost. I said, you have to be in awe of God. You have to be in awe of God. Watch this. When you understand being in awe of God, that means it don't matter what may come my way. If I'm in the right position and if I am beholding his glory and if I'm like Isaiah and I'm saying, woe is me, watch it for my wretch undone. When I see his glory, guess what? I'm walking in such a power that I can be distracted by the mundane things of life. That means everything in the natural can't touch me because I'm in the supernatural realm and I understand that the power that God has vested inside of me, I cannot be denied my right for purpose. I cannot be denied my passion. I can't be denied nothing that God ordained because I am standing in awe of God. Stand in awe of God and you won't worry. Hear me. Hear me, people. Stand in awe of God and you won't walk in fear. Stand in awe of God and you won't be confused. Stand in awe of God and you won't be misguided. Stand in awe of God and you won't be manipulated by the wrong people. Matter of fact, by no people. Because you will know the fruit that everyone produced that come into your life. When you stand in awe of God, he'll give you a revelation. He will give you clarity. He will watch this. God said, my people got to turn their hearts back to me. Sanctify yourselves for, to, for tomorrow I will do wonders among you. And we got to get back into a place of sanctification. A place where we're saying, God, I trust you. God, I give you my all. God, I love you. I'm going to worship you like it's my last. 
I'm going to praise you like it's my last. I'm going to pray like it's my last. I'm going to read this Bible like tomorrow is not promised to me. If you wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to get up because the next hour is not promised to me. So I'm going to give it my everything, God. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to live on purpose. I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to call out your name. God, guess what God said to me? He said this. Watch this. He said, he said, my people. My, many of my people are discouraged. Watch this. He said, because they fell into sin. He said, I never, watch this, watch this. He said, many of my people are discouraged because they fell into sin. Because, so therefore they feel disqualified for ministry. They feel like they have strayed away so far that their purpose is no longer purposeful. God said the devil is a liar. You have not strayed too far. Your sin is not that deep. To keep you away from me. I don't care how the church folk may reject you. I receive you. Let me show you something. If you read the Bible. If you go to. Um, matter of fact I'll post scriptures up. I'm going to post it after this video. But listen. If you go to the woman at the well. I said this, and even if you go to the woman with the issue of blood, even if you go to the man at the pool, even if you go to the, uh, the, the, the rich ruler, let me tell you something. The rich ruler who had a servant that, and I'm going to post the scripture, he had a servant that was sick, and he came across Jesus, and he said, watch this, he said, Jesus, he, he, he told him to come to his house, but then he wound up stopping Jesus on, along his tracks, and he said, Jesus, um, you know, you're, I'm not worthy that you should come into my house. I'm not worthy that, but if you just say the word, that you will do it. And the Bible says that Jesus said the word, watch this. He said the word, and by the time that the man got home, his servant was healed. Now watch this. To confirm it, he said, about what time? <laughs> I love this. Did he get healed? And it was the exact same time that Jesus performed the word. Now you have to understand, if you're going to believe, God is saying, he know your sin already. But if you believe that if I just say the word, be healed, that you will be healed. If I just say the word, forgiven, you are forgiven. And I guess what, when God says forgiven, you got to now forgive yourself. Many of us are not forgiving ourselves because we act like we were supposed to be holy, holy, holy every single day of our lives. God knew that you wasn't going to walk holy, holy, holy. He did command us to be ye holy, but he understood that you was not going to walk that way every single day. That's why he sent the Christ. Because he, he knew that before you committed it, he sent the Christ. That's why Jesus died for our sins. Now God says, recognize it. Now get yourself up and become what I ordained. Don't focus on that because I am the one that can cleanse you. I am the one that will purify you. Don't look. And what they can say. How many times in the Bible, and I'm about to close. How many times you saw in the Bible where, the, where, where Jesus said, don't worry about what they can say. Don't worry about you being a child. Don't worry about you being a youth. So I'm going to say this to you. Don't worry about whatever sin you may have committed. You get on your knees and pray like it's your last time praying. And you say, God, I have sinned and I've fallen short of your glory and I need your grace to cover me because if your grace don't cover me, I am liable to go and do the same sin. God, I need you. And when you say, God, I need you, he will protect you. He will cover you and he will say the word over your life. And that sin that you want to struggle with for 25 years, you won't struggle with for five years. You won't struggle with for seven years. You won't struggle. But you have to go with a willing heart and say, God, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. And watch God do the rest. Watch God do the rest. I love y'all good people. This is PSD. I'm sorry for coming up. This thing like it's dark. I don't know. But this is PSD. And all I'm going to say tonight is give it to all people. Give it to all. Go to God with everything you got inside of you. And tell God I surrender. 
Like, like God knows everything, right? So there's no need, watch this, there's no need to be embarrassed, okay? Because God knows everything. So he knows everything to the degree that would you know everything and more, okay? So when you can just say, God, I need you. Because see, you, you can go to God and say, God, I need you so bad because they reject me. God, I don't feel like I'm loved. God, I don't feel like, I feel like I'm being used by everybody that's in my life. God, I tried to love this man. And I tried to love that man. And I tried to love that man. And I tried to love that man. And though, and all the men I tried to love hurt me. God, I tried to love her. But she cheated. God, I tried to be the man to her. But she hurt me. God said, just open your heart and come to me. And when you come to this man, you will never hurt again because guess what? I will lead you to the man and the woman that is I ordained for your life. But all I need you to do is be honest. God, you know, I just had sex last night. And I know it's against your will. God, I'm struggling with homosexuality. God, I, I, I need you in the world. I mean, the church don't accept me, God. But, 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 but God says, come to me with whatever you're struggling with. And I will give you a love like no, like no one else. I will embrace you like no one else. And then I will set your mind straight. I will put you on the path of righteousness. I will put you on the path of holiness. But all I need you to do right now is come as you are. And when you come as you are, you will understand that when you become a witness of the kingdom, that God accepted you as I am. And God said, now I am showing you I am. <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. You're going to be able to say, God accepted me as I am. And now he is showing me I am. That means he's showing me who he is. And he is showing me who I am. I came as I am. And he is showing me who I am. And that is what deliverance and miracles and all that means. Give your all to God, people. It don't matter your yesterday. It don't matter your right now. If so, let me say this real quick. I, I don't even want. Let me just say this. If anybody want to rededicate their life to Christ, say, Lord, Lord, I believe that you sent your son. Or God, how do you want to say it? I ain't trying to be politically correct. Just however you can conjure this up. God, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe, Lord God, that he is the resurrection. He is my savior. He is my redeemer. I am a believer of your word, and I, and I believe that your word is truth. Your, the Bible is without flaw, and I receive you into my heart, Lord. All right? That's what God says. I receive you into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Make me whole, God. I want to see you like I've never seen you. I want to experience you like I've never experienced you. God, I rededicate my life to you tonight. And I say, have your way. For I am yours. And do whatever it is you want to do. And when you do that, if you said that prayer, you are saved. You are sanctified. And you are Holy Ghost filled. And God is not concerned about what you did yesterday. The heavens are rejoicing because you are part of the kingdom of God. You are a part of his inheritance, okay? You are a part of his inheritance. And the Bible says, 11, uh, John eleven forty that if you believe that you will see the glory of God. And so you have to tell God, I believe. Now let me see your glory. Hold God to his word over your life. Hold him to his word. And watch the manifestation over your life. And I'm not telling you it's going to be easy every day. But I promise you, if you trust God, because we all have to go through a rough patch. We all have to have a wilderness experience. You can be the nicest guy, the nicest girl. You are going to have a tough experience in life. It is ordained. We cannot escape it. But you know that when I have this tough season, I got a God that will give me a way of escape. I got a God that will protect me. I got a God that will cover me. I got a God that will deliver me. That's what it's all about. Because we all go through hard times. I go through it, feel like, every day of my life. <laughs> but I love y'all. I love y'all. Saying about nothing else. I love 
God. And I love that God placed y'all in my life. And I thank God for every last one of you. And none of you are a failure. None of you are a mistake. None of you are a mistake, man. I'm going to say that one. None of, nobody that's watching this broadcast is, is a mistake. God didn't make a mistake when he designed you. You are, you are going to be resurrected with Christ, man. You got the power. You got more power than you recognize. Now go be. Go be. You know, ever since God said, light be, light ain't stopped being ever since. So you ask God, what am I to be? And then now you go be. Just go be. Go be. Go be happy. Go be joyous. Okay? Just don't be condemned. Yeah, we walk in conviction, but don't be condemned. Move the way that God ordained you to move. Okay? No condemnation. Move and he will sanctify you. He will glorify you in due season. He will get the, he, whatever's wrong that you're going through that's in your life that is not like God, he will cleanse you. He will purge you of everything that don't look like him so that when people see you, you will look like him. Just go be and let God do the cleansing. Stop trying to clean yourself up and say, God, have your way and God will cleanse you the way you're supposed to be cleansed. Your steps will be ordered by the righteousness that he placed inside of you, man and woman. Go B, and I love y'all. This is PSD. I am out of here. I had fun with y'all tonight. Thank you. Pray for me. Pray with me. Uh, I'm moving into another dimension in God and I'm moving to another dimension in grace and in favor. And my videos are going to be different. Just trust the process. Trust God with me. I love y'all. I love y'all so God doggone much. I know I went to a lot of places, but know that I love y'all so much and I don't care about nothing else but y'all being edified and God being glorified. All right? Is yeah, this bless y'all? Share the video. Yeah, whatever it is, just do whatever you want, but just be what God commanded and give it all you got. Give it all you got. This is PSD signing out tonight. God bless. Add my new page if, you, if this ministry bless you. All right? Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.